Let's uh, see you. Oh, thanks. Today. It's been very chivalrous. It feels um, weird that we are doing this with cameras today. But guys, we're going to have a very... I've never done this. I think it's going to be interesting. I've never done this. Do I've this never been... Uh, tape cast. Any nervous... I've never been nervous. But today I'm nervous. Okay, so... It's okay. We're starting with the, with the, with the intro. The intro, come on. Pariniti Chopra and Siddharth Malhotra. Welcome to Tapecast. It's been amazing to watch your journey over the years. We can't wait to discover more about the both of you. Pariniti, will you pick the first question? Yes. So let's do a tricky one. Should I help you with Mane. Let's Mane. do a tricky one. Siddharth, for student of the year, you got a signing amount of 1.1 lakh. We're <laughs> sure more zeros have been added to the paycheck now. But have you ever taken a pay cut for a role? Pay cut for a role? Ooh! Indeed. Uh, I think so far I've never really taken any, uh, you know, uh, or even made a decision based on, on money, money when yeah, it comes to choosing sure. your films. I remember actually referring to the same check that I got uh, <laughs> for a student of the year. It was many years ago and then uh, me and my friends, the group of people I was to stay with, we decided, you know, I didn't tell them that the you know, picture is locked. I told them that I've given the audition. Ah. So we went out partying and that's the, and actually oddly that's the check that I'd put in three days ago. Oh. And because before that I hardly had few thousands or whatever. Yeah. And I used to get that debit card at yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah. So we've gone on clubbing in, in Bombay and then uh, ordered one bottle of alcohol. Everybody drank and then <laughs> I was feeling extra gracious not telling them what it is. Ordered one more bottle. And then ordered one more and they were also being here. Kya kya hai? Hai there were some five of us and hatte kate boys and yeah. celebrating and then more friends joined in and some yeah. girls came in so the bottles kept flowing. Yeah. And I realized that by the end of it when I did break the news to them that kya, guys you know that film that I auditioned for, student of the year, Dharma Productions, I'm getting launched. Like, yeah, okay, one more bottle of champagne came. By the end of it, the <laughs> bill was about more than half of what had gone. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah. And my card could only swipe 20,000 at that time. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so, <laughs> bill has come, it's my treat. And I'm like, you I, mean, I, I didn't feel bad, eh? I didn't really, I was more embarrassed at the fact that my card couldn't swipe more. Yeah. I didn't care, I spent more than half of it. We had really a lot of fun. I only remember some half of that night. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but uh, I remember another asking another friend who actually, not a friend, another, another gentleman who was there at that party we knew of. He was very gracious to, you know, pitch in half the amount in which I paid him later on. But that's how I equate money. I don't think yeah. that it's something that I really, of course, I want to make money. Everybody wants to, everybody's ambitious. But if at that present moment, um, you know, if I had to do it all over again hmm. and maybe spend 50, 60,000 a night, even though I have only a lack in my a lack, account, yeah. I would do it again. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, I feel there is, there is no, I'm not insecure about money in that sense. Um, not that I'm not ambitious about it, but it's the thought of ki that's something that I don't want to really pay attention at. It'll keep Correct. coming and flowing. Correct. I've also survived in Bombay in only 11,000 rupees at one time when I came. Same, yeah, yeah. same, uh, same. I was an AD, I used to get paid uh, that yeah. much. Maybe I think with, they used to pay extra phone ka bills for 14,000 rupees. <laughs> yeah, I used same. to pay rent and then party and have a good living in that. Correct. Um, I used to also do. Uh, I actually used to do, uh, when I was an assistant director, Karan Malhotra, who's the ah. director now, was my first AD. Hmm. And I was like the junior most amongst like six or seven of us. Yeah. And I could not take days off. Like, you know, only days off would be a Sunday. Or maybe sometimes when you're doing a recce or not, even not otherwise, because, uh, you know, you're the junior most AD in the film. Yeah. I used to actually make excuses at times and say, Ki, I'm not sick and get those photo shoots for certain brands oh, of clothing. Oh, like a model. Yeah, like a model. I used, to, yeah. I used to bounce off to Chennai or Hyderabad or wherever. <laughs> One day shoot, they used to come, come back the same night, yeah. pretend that I'm sick all day, yeah. make about that 50, 60,000 that I spent <laughs> in that one day and then and party all Again, month. You know? party. Wow. So it, it used to be really fun, I think. so. Uh, but when it comes to movies, 
I haven't, uh, taken haven't a made card? a decision or a pay cut so far. So. I have. Oh. I have Achha. taken some. Yeah, sadly. So really my my that, uh, first check was a little more than 1.1 lakh. Like for uh, Ladies versus Vicky Bell, I think I got 5 lakhs. Socho. Guys. Badi picture hai, badi picture. Pehli baar ladki ko zada paise mile ladke Badi picture. Haan. It was like a, it was like a amazing thing. I had signed a three film deal. So like the, the amounts were pre-decided, I remember. There was five and I think there was ten or something like that. And I was like, yaar, ye toh baut dheere dheere chal raha hai, aise kaise hoga and all. Then, but I remember by the time Shuddh Desi came, my pre-approved amount that was in the contract, Adi said, no, that's not fair. Because I had given Ladies vs Ricky Bell and Ishak Zade. So he thought that my price should be more. So for Shuddh Desi Romance, he called and said, Acha, for the third film, na, I'm just increasing it to this much. So I was like, how much? What? So then he gave her like a biggish figure. So I was like, wow, amazing. And like that was the day I felt like, okay, now I have a little bit of money, you know. And I remember for ladies, we had shot in Goa for almost a month at Taj Village. Mm. And it was a huge deal for me to stay in a five-star property for a month, month and a half with the whole crew. I was like, Bahut kharcha kar rahe ye log and all. And I remember one of the first installments came and from like my bank, I got a message saying your account has been credited with one lakh. So I was like, what? What is this? I immediately booked like a villa for my parents and I flew them down to Goa. I said, oh. I'm paying for your tickets and I'm paying for your villa and all. I remember that villa cost like some 20,000 rupees a night mm. or something and it was a huge thing. Of course. And my mom had obviously thought that she'll come and she'll pay or whatever. But like when she came, when they checked out, they said, no, everything has been taken care of. And I remember my mom crying and telling me that, when did all this change? When have you mm. started paying for us and all? So it was a very... Special moment. You would sign a sure. film for money? In a sense, somebody paid you extra? Mm -hmm. oh. No, actually. No. Uh, the thing is that this goes to, unfortunately, a more serious issue of the pay parity thing, which I don't want to get into. But the problem is that I've just felt that for many films, mm. I didn't get my fair price because I just couldn't argue that I should be paid more. Mm. Even though my position was good enough or whatever. And I and I thought that I I deserved that price, I couldn't explain it to the producers. And I've actually seen checks of heroes of the same film mm. who are probably sort of the same position on mine, but getting paid four times that amount. Like hypothetical figures, guys, supposing I'm getting five lakhs, that same actor was getting like a crore for that same film. There was a mm. huge difference. Um, so like that's when I actually realized that there is a thing called pay parity or whatever. There is an mm. actual thing. So I've always felt like I deserved a little bit more, but I got this much. But then we make it up in endorsements. The girls do a lot of endorsements. So we kind of make it up there. So that is why I never talk about it because the boys don't do as many endorsements as the girls do. And I, th I hope I'm right. I hope I'm not wrong. But we do so many like beauty commercials, hair commercials, mm. like so many brands. And I think we kind of cover it up there. All right, so my next question to you, Pari, is on, uh, on failure. failure. Pari Neeti, mm. in an interview, you talked about a time when your career dipped. You said, I was 25 and suddenly failure hit my life. I was down financially, yeah. professionally and on the personal front. Yeah. It was like I'd been sucked into a black hole. Yeah. How did you get out of this black hole? I'm mm. going to cry. <laughs> mm. So how did you get out of this black hole, Pari? What, what, what phase are you referring to? Something which is... I'm referring to the year 2015. Okay. End of 2014 and all of 2015. I think I would say that one and a half years was truly the worst time in my life. Mm. Because uh, two of my films didn't work. Mm. That was the first setback. Davatesh and Kill Dil. Mm. were released like back to back in 2014, mm. didn't work. Suddenly, I didn't have like money and I had made a lot of money by then. But mm. I had bought a house and I'd like done some big, big investments and all, suddenly didn't have money. And then I went through a big heartbreak in my life. So, mm. literally all the departments in my life were down. Mm. Nothing positive to look forward to. I went into a shell. I stopped eating, I stopped sleeping well, 
I didn't have any friends at that time. I didn't like I never used to meet people. Basically, mm. you know, people I was in touch with, I just cut off from everyone, including my family. I would talk to them like once in two weeks. I was, I was, I was gone. I was. What finished. did you do? You just by yourself, nothing. Else. I just used to be shut down. in my room, watching TV, sleeping, getting up, staring all day. I was a zombie. Mm. Uh, I was a full zombie. I was like that typical filmy, depressed girl. You know, I would mm. curl up on my sofa and sleep. You know, fall ill all the time. Didn't meet the media for almost six months. Um, so then, what 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 brought you out of that? I would say, you know, there were a couple of people in my life who really helped me. Uh, mm. Sehaj, my brother, is my soulmate. I spoke to him every like he was the only one I used to speak to every single day. Mm. Um, and he would help me out. He would stay with me. Uh, my friend Sanjana, I spoke to her a lot. Actually, we became closer in that year because she helped me so much. Mm. I would be said I would like cry maybe ten times a day. I was always crying. I was always upset. I was always I had this chest pain that would not go out of my body. I've never mm. felt depression, actual clinical depression. I've not felt it, and it happened to me in that year. Mm. And then it started getting better towards the starting of 2016, and I suddenly started feeling better, and I started working on myself. I became fitter. I signed Golmal. I signed Bindu, um, and um, I, I moved into a new house. And I just kind of just literally took life into my own hands, because I thought if I'm going to go into this pit, I'll never come out again. Because mm. I was 25, I was an emotionally very very vulnerable person. You know it. I was mm. I was very emotionally here and there. I mm. never had any gravitas. I was just a flying bird. I didn't have anything holding me. Um, and I thought if I don't get out of it now, I'm never going to get out of it. So just suddenly I started working a lot. Uh, Bindu really healed me. Uh, my personal life became better. My I started meeting friends again. I had to call up a lot of people and apologize for being out of touch. And mm. I had to reconnect with all my people and now Touchwood, I'm prepared. Today, if like any kind of failure hits me, it could be... Are you better know. prepared to handle yeah, it? Yeah, I'm definitely better prepared. I'm definitely better prepared. And I'm, Sid, honestly, I thank God every day that this didn't happen to me later. I, I'm so glad it mm. happened when I was 25. Because that chhatka so early can really fix you for life. You know? But when you look back, do you wish that you would have done something else in that phase or, or handled it differently? Or maybe it was good or bad or useful or not useful or use that time productively for I something think, else? No, I think the kind of person that I am, I think it was important for me to feel that once in my life. Today I know that today I have the same failures, the same problems. Mm. I'll get out of them, I'll fix myself faster. Hmm. I know that I'll be, much like you, you are a person who likes to deal with problems quickly and move on and fix things or you go through your shit. And I but try. Yeah, you, you are that person. So I think today I would be that person. But I think once in my life, I had to go through that absolute black hole. I had to. Hmm. Because today I'm scared of being like that again. So today I will never allow myself to go back there again. I'll just... Never allow it. Whatever happens in my life, I'll not let myself be that loser that I was for that. I call myself a loser. Mm. But it was the biggest win of my life. Sort of good. We're happy you're out of yeah. it. Yeah. I will choose... Showbiz. Siddharth, you were talking about how actors get work. You said, if you connect with the audience, you'll get cast again. Also, as Karan Johar says, dressing up always helps. Does it? Mmm. <laughs> there are two questions. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, I think, uh, which I've said that before, like I think in every, every generation, only a few people yeah. get accepted as faces, as personalities, as people uh, in our country that they want to see as leading actors. Yeah. Um, so you feel blessed and lucky. I don't think mm. anybody can plan to uh, come agree. in that group. I agree. There's an XYZ reason that one gets uh, chosen. Of course, there's a lot of hard work and talent that goes into it or just practice or yeah. 
or just doing more work. But um, yeah, I think that that's in the other part of uh, dressing up, dressing up, which is uh, no uh, pajamas to PVR. I've never, I've, I've, <laughs> I've never done that actually. Even in yeah. Delhi, I think would be um, uh, maybe growing up in uh, in. In South Delhi, where mostly my dressing you up would happen for, up. for all the girls that we were trying yeah. to impress. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. there was always somebody the other people wanted to impress. <laughs> okay, so next question to Kali <laughs> is, uh, friends. Can you have enduring friendships within the industry? Or is it all too dependent on your current project and the state of your career? I'll just take a bathroom break and come. <laughs> Cannot answer this so question. So what do you think, Pari? Do you have real friends in the industry? Uh, honestly, uh, I think I have three or four real friends in the industry. Mm. And I've noticed that they are all the ones that I almost started off with. Because uh. I am truly a believer that the sort of newer friends that happen, you know, slightly later in your career, might be work associated, might not be what you really want. But I know I'm wrong because many people make friends later also. Uh, you make new friends and you make friends like people you've just worked with, your co-actors, your directors can become your friends. But just in my case, like you or Arjun mm. or mm. I would say Ayushman or just like mm. some people who I like started off with or I knew before I became like an actress or I really got into the this world of films mm. I think those people just kind of treat me the way they always treated me like all of you will never treat me as some actress or some something you will always treat me like Pari and that I really like like that I actually I wouldn't survive if that wasn't the case So um, you're comfortable within the industry making friends and feeling that there, is, there are relationships to cherish and be like long lasting some, I feel some. I feel that a lot happens in phases in the industry. A lot of things happen for a certain point in time and then they fizzle out. And you don't really keep in touch with those guys again. But like I said, some new relationships can also be fought. Sometimes you end up dating people. Sometimes you end up making friends mm. in these peop with people. A lot of relationships you've can actually be found. not. Have you you've not really had a, a relationship within the industry? Mm, no. Not that I know of. <laughs> or, no, no, no. So. no, I feel that I see I get attracted to really real boys like what I mean by real boys is <laughs> yeah what I mean by real boys is that it's a it's a vibe yeah. I have to know that you're not so you just made some really good friends in the industry self, so yeah. uh, I, I can't basically work with self-obsessed and career-obsessed people, me. which is a lot of, but I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about like I'm within that category, I'm, I'm a working so actor. So you know, that's why you're my friend, you're Achha. normal. Achha. I can't work with like self-obsessed, career-obsessed no, that, That's the profession, people. you can't judge a person by what they're but doing for a living. But there are some, okay, As I've also seen people. in other relationships, mm. some actors or some directors who are so obsessed with what they do, they that, cannot that, that, give it to a relationship. So that puts you off, you're saying? 100%. It's a big turn off if, if my boyfriend or whoever I'm dating comes and tells me, you know, today I shot this, look at my photo shoot or look at this shot I took. I mean, it, there is a difference between sharing your day and then only doing that and not really giving anything well, to the relationship. That's his job. He's talking about his work. But you would be okay with a girl who only talks about her work, who is only obsessed with herself, who's only mm -hmm. obsessed. No, right? You can direct the conversation wherever you want. But it's a, it's a, it's a, so if somebody is some working, if someone's working in a profession, I think it's completely separate of. So of you their think you would be able to date somebody? You know the kind of people that are in the industry. Uh -huh. You know many of them. Would uh -huh. you be able to have a long-term relationship with that section of people? <laughs> I didn't know how I to like say it safely. No, you know I what think I mean? it's 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 the job that we do. Of course, is more pressurizing and it's it's difficult to maybe give time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think you need a personality type to to be an actor. So there are many people you connect. There are many with kinds some. of actors. That's what you I'm don't saying. connect with some. So I've I, had relationships in the industry. So yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Sometimes 
I just, I just feel there are. See, most of the real boys are my friends, so I'm not uh. dating them, right? Uh, but if I had to date one of them, it would have to be if it's an actor, for instance. Mm. It would have to be that guy who's doesn't have the negatives that some actors can have. He has to be that real normal guy. That's my requirement. All right. Good luck with that. Who's the story? So basically, it's been uh, this thing. He's going to date an actor. So I will not date an actor. No, this not saying it. <laughs> people are people. Is it? I think it's your turn. It's my turn. So I'll put on any one tape. I don't even know which one I've taken. Ready. Siddhant, mm. you've done big banner films like Brothers, Bar Bar Dekho, and Ayari. All of which underperformed. Mm. When the guys who are supposed to deliver don't deliver, mm. how do you select projects? Because there is no guarantee. What do you rely on? Ah, uh, not bad. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I think there is. Uh, there is no guarantee. Yeah, I think there, there was an answer in that question. Yeah. Uh, it is very disappointing as an actor when you put in so much hard work. Yeah. Into uh, various characters and films of yours, and you know, hoping that it'll work. Sometimes even a good team is not good enough to make a, yeah. you know, a, yeah. a good film. I remember uh, Brothers had uh, so much uh, hype around it. Going for you it. You know, uh, really interesting cast, great director, everything. But you also have to realize, I think you come out out of that situation a slightly more mature and understanding that maybe uh, you know certain ideas or certain Certain uh, conviction that yeah. one particular team has doesn't really go to that extent. I think that film didn't exactly make so many losses, but it didn't, didn't do that much as well at the box office. So you feel you feel uh, you feel definitely feel like uh, you know you put in so much hard work, it didn't work out. But now when you look at it again, as I say, I think it's all you're just part of a team. Yeah. I think, uh, in india it becomes ki is actor ki picture or sometimes the director ki picture yeah, is is uh, i think actors and directors take you know take bear the brunt of it and i yeah. think uh, i won't say fair or unfair because i think they have the audience says it all when a film is liked and loved and when it's not but you have to understand that uh, dukaan chalti rehni chahiye that's are the only that, thing like are you that person who before that friday knows ke will this film do well or not or does it come as a shock on a friday like i think about this for myself after a lot after this experience i don't know anything <laughs> so true. after this experience you can't you same, can't no, no same, you, you have an idea if you've done uh, a particular character well or if things are uh, you know uh, making sense in a film yeah. but you can't really say to what extent uh, a film can do like for example even ek villain as my third film Hmm. I had no understanding of box office whatsoever. Correct. Correct. Whether that Friday or that lifetime business, what yeah. that meant, the number of people that go in. So I think uh, in today's day and age, with the media around, I think everything is emphasized a lot. Yeah. You know whether it's one Friday yeah. uh, doing well or one Friday doing bad. But uh, as long as you're working and you have, you know, films coming out. Hmm. Uh, that's my way of uh, dealing with it. It's, it's just to move on, is to move on to the next page, yeah. the next character, the next film. Uh, definitely, it gives you also. I think uh, what 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 these films give me is uh, a lot more fire in my belly. Yeah. You know, to work uh, probably on many more aspects, work yeah. harder. Yeah. Provide something newer. Uh, you know, push. Uh, oddly, it actually makes me the other direction to push something which is Motivates commercial, you more. but. But has an edge, or has something new. Uh, yeah. So maybe it's for the better. Maybe I'm people uh, or the universe, as we say, is preparing us for. No, better, I agree with things. you. I agree with you. It's not cliched when you say that success doesn't teach you, failure teaches you. Yeah. Really teaches you and makes you a better person, whether it's personal failure or film failure. I agree. I mm. do agree. Thank this you so much. This was lovely, Pari. It was with lovely. You. Without anybody else, just yeah. uh, this. Little thing giving us questions. Yeah, uh, I know him so well, but I learned a lot about you today. Yeah, this is a first. Wow. Yeah, it's quite interesting. It's a first. Good. The nervousness helped. Okay, so sadly, guys. Ha. <laughs> Siddharth and Pariniti, thank you for your honesty. It's been wonderful listening to you. May the road ahead be smooth and soaring. 